okay so here we have this uh, first table so our purpose of doing this check table is we want to check if the record is there in the main table only then the primary table only then it should be updated with the secondary table with the record so for a particular employee if the data is there in the employee details then only it should be able to uh, uh, you know update the data in the salary details so for that what we'll do is we'll go ahead with the so we are, we are going ahead with a uh, new table here so in the fields we have mndt mndt and then we have this uh, employee number i'm creating top bottom top down approach so emp no zdxc underscore eno it is this is not there so i'll click create this yes 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 employee number again we have zdxc underscore eno so yes character 10 activate request then we have to go for something like employee name ZTXC underscore ENA and double click on this. Say so yes. So we're creating this employee name. Set EMP NA ZTXC underscore employee name. Double click on this, say yes. One second. Okay, so we just MP name and here we will be having this character some 10 MP name is 20. Okay, so activate this uh, data domain. Come back. Activate the data element as well. Come back and we will double click on this employee number. Activate this data element. Okay. Now everything is fine. Now what we need, what we want to do is we want to create we want to make this as a primary table. This this happens to be a check ta check table. So for that, what we have to do is we have to make maintain this at the data element domain level. Domain level, we have to maintain the check table. So first, we'll give it as a value table here. We'll double click on this. We'll go to this, and here we will give in the value range here in the value range down. We'll be giving this. We'll be giving the uh, value table. So we have we have to give the value table here. So that value table is what in the value table is Z J H underscore EMPS. So that's the uh, that's the check value table. So once we do this, when we create a next table, this will be taken into consideration. The value table is not active, it means okay. 
we need to activate the value table size category 0 So this is done now. Now we'll create a couple of entries here and we already made this as a check value table now. So we'll go for more. This is a first table. Now second for second table, this will become a dependent table. Now we, what we created right now is a primary table. Okay. I'll create a couple of entries here. I'll go for something like 100 employee name name save reset 101 virtual save so once it's been done we'll go back and two records have been created now two records have been created so what we'll do is uh, we'll go back and create a new record new table called sal okay or sal sal2 okay i'll make it simple Z J H E N S E S L. E S L. Okay. So create salary details. Now this one will be a application table. This one will be display maintenance alert. Field names will give the field name first. Field is M A N D T. M A N D T. EMP and go for this we need to give that uh, check table name is I mean like the M in data and data element is EMP and underscore D Z EMP and O underscore D E no not this one no this is not the table actually the table name is EMPS right so in this DX Z D X C underscore EMP so that is that needs to be given that it element is needs to be given z d x c underscore e and o now we have salary we have z j h for salary i'm taking the existing uh, field and for currency also Currency is it? So we have this currency. So here we will be updating this currency. Currency field. So here we will we need to update that as. Z J H underscore 
esal and then curr okay and then we have to go for technical settings size category 0 save impact activate now we need to maintain the we need to maintain the check table so here if you go for input check input check is not there so we need to give the input check for this employee number so we'll let's do that now so for the input check we have so for input check how we'll get that is we need to maintain the foreign key relation we have maintained the value table but we also have to maintain the foreign key relation so we have to go for foreign key relation for this yes and it already gives the proposal create proposal yeah it's already there so just double click on this employee number So this has been maintained now. Okay, so here we have this. So once we have done this, we'll go for the input check now. In the input check, uh, it's still not coming right. So it should come here actually, the input check field. Here we have EMPL is active only. I'm just checking if the table is active. ESAL also is active. Okay, so here you just need to double click. It's not yet closed. So check required is there. So we have to maintain this as Okay, so I'll just
the foreign key is applied now. So we'll, the foreign key is applied now. Once the foreign key is applied, what we have to do is we have to go for this more. Okay, so let me activate this. Once the foreign key is applied, it will become inactive. That's it. That's what I was checking out. This is inactive. This is active now. Now when we go for this uh, utilities, okay, let us let us see in the input check uh, whether it is there or not. Yes, now it has been implemented. So we'll go for this uh, values more utilities table contents rate entries now this red mark has come see if the red mark has come it means that it will it will only entertain those values for which we have the data in the primary key primary table so when i say save for 1001 entry of 1001 does not exist in the in the check table check entry so that's the reason it's not doing it so this is about the foreign key relation maintaining the foreign key relation value table and check table search helper customer number let's do that now so for customer number we have to create the search help so we'll go for this sc11 So we have ZJH underscore cost create. So let me search it. Customer number. Selection method is the table name that we have here. ZJH underscore customer. Let us select the field names, customer number. Customer name, and form, lower position 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. These are just the positions. So import parameter this customer number and export parameters these three. You can put all the three also as import parameters. Underscore cost. Okay, ZJH underscore cost is what we have to implement for this one. Okay, so we I'm just activating this. Now this is done. So once it's been done, we'll go back and when we execute this, We should be able to see the F4 here. Uh, 
So here you get this F4 help here. So you get the drop down here. Okay. And then here if we go for this, for this one there is no F4 help because we have not maintained it. Okay, so this is such a so so in this session we are create, going to create a table type now. So let us go ahead and create a table type for that. We'll first create a structure z st underscore lf1. Okay. Here we need to go for structure. Without, as I told you, without structure, we cannot create a table type. When that details, then here we have component. So we have to have these fields. So we created a structure here. Now we'll go ahead and uh, create a in, uh, internal table type, the table type. So for that we have to do it underscore lip one create. We'll go for table type. This is a global internal table for vendor data. Line tab LST underscore LF1. Save. Now this is just like a global internal table. Now, how to consume this into our program is what we'll see now.
see if you observe here we are not writing type standard table of why we are not writing standard table of because this is not a structure where this is an internal table so you are saying internal table type internal table ta global table type global table right so this will work select options as n square life in a for w underscore ls1 hyphen ls1 then we have select life in a name one so we have this land one name one what is it land one name one what is it from ls1 into table I can install it now. Yeah, I can install it. Loop at I can install it now. Into W install it now. And look. So we have this data here. I think we don't have data for what is zero. Let's say it's not coming. But ultimately, what I'm trying to tell you here is like instead of writing the site and scroll if you want type standard table of HTML scroll if you want, we are directly writing table type. So if you are writing table type here, then you should not write standard table. If you write it, it will throw an error. System will throw an error. Okay, so in this, like, uh, we excuse me, sir. Uh, sorry for the additional length. Type group is a collection of type declarations. Collection of type declarations is type group. Okay, so what do I mean by that is like you know, for example, we have types, types begin of and begin of ST underscore EMP, something like that, right? So that can be declared that no matter how many number of type declarations are there, all those type declarations can be kept in the type group. But you cannot declare anything like data. You cannot go for data you cannot declare data and you cannot declare anything which does not start with the type full name for example if the type full name let's assume that the type full name is z dxc underscore z dxc underscore z dxc okay z dxc one then the types which we declare in internally should start with begin of begin of z dxc one hyphen underscore anything else you can write something like uh, uh, ht or something like that but you cannot start with anything other than other than this you cannot write like this begin of ht underscore z dx even irrespective of whatever it is see the question the 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 concept here is whatever is a type pool type group name with the same name all the declarations inside the type pool should start So all the declarations should start with this name. Okay, so that's what is the concept here. And you cannot declare data, data because data stores uh, data, right? So we have to declare. We can declare only type declarations here. So let's say if I declare it as dxc one, create.
all type declarations. So let's say you have a lot of hundreds of type declarations that have to be done. So if it has to be done, then we can go ahead with the type type group. Now this will be acceptable but when it comes to okay this will not throw any error let me show you this it will it will be working perfectly fine it gets activated also save syntax check so name underscore g name one underscore jp So here, uh, we, uh, this is pretty fine. You don't get any error. But now you will, you will find an error. You will get an error. Let's say so picking off st underscore emp end of st underscore emp emp end of of ten. So it throws error actually. It is in syntactical error. It will it will throw in syntactical error. It says all names of objects called zdx1 in the current type will must begin with zdx1 underscore. So if you if you declare anything, you have to declare it with the zdx1 for sure. Otherwise, it will not work. So. So now I have to change this to ZDX1. It should start with ZDX1. Here also it should start with ZDXC1. Now you will not have any error. So this is successfully 
activated. So what is a type group? Uh, it's a collection of types. Now, let's say if you declare data, data also will throw an error. Data, I will go for zdxc1 underscore it type standard table of zdxc1 underscore st. So it will throw an error because I have used the data term data. Data cannot be accessed, cannot be used in type declaration in the type group. It says type pool you can define only types and constants. So if I change this to data, I change this to types, then it will work. Now it is activated because it is declared in the types. So these are these are two major con conditions here for type declarations. So if you have some hundred or thousand structures that have to be created, you can do that in this uh, type group. This is what we have. Okay, next. Uh, this is about the type group. And then we have to discuss about the lock objects. This is the one thing that is left. Search up we have used domains, data types all. So in views, we'll have different types of views. So we have something called a maintenance view and help view. So you'll have maintenance view, you will have, you will have help view. So to discuss about the maintenance view and help you, we need to first discuss about the table maintenance generator. So we need to update the table maintenance generator and according to that, we can maintain the maintenance view. So we'll do that. So first and foremost is if we, let's say we have a table here. Oh, I think that is treated in some other table. So for this table, we can maintain the data. See, how do you maintain the data? You'll go to utilities, table contents, create entries. Then you'll get a only single screen like this. Again, reset again screen. So if you want it to be in a single screen, everything should be displayed and also we can update everything. Then you have to go for um, we have to go for table maintenance generator. Let's maintain the table maintenance generator for this. So we'll have utilities table maintenance generator. So we need to click on utilities table maintenance generator. So when you click on this, you have to maintain the function group. Uh, function group needs to be there in SEAD. You just need to create a function group in SEAD.
created is fg1 is created, zh and is created g1 is created so that's a function group so here authorization group i'm giving this and nc and means without authorization group so when you give an authorization group only those people who have authorization group can change this means can add the data to it add the data to this particular program so say this particular table zh underscore fg1 i'm going for one step one step in this video one so enter click on create
okay so it's been updated now so now we can go back and once we go back we'll have this uh, table maintenance generated we can go to sm30 transaction now sm30 and we can update the data from there so by default that last use table will be there here you can click on maintain so here two records are displaying now since i have used uh, one screen i have selected i have set that you know in the in the table maintainer i selected only one screen so since i have uh, used it as one screen table maintenance generator i have clicked on one screen only one step the one step means everything will be visible here two step means another screen will come where we if you click on new entries another pop up will come and there we have to update it so if you can just click on new entries you will get here only so in this like let us go for 102 which one sap and click on save this will be saved okay and we can go ahead and uh, check the data now so all the records are there so primary keys cannot be changed but the other values can be changed they can be enhanced now so for example say pragya and then save so this is updated now this this is modified we can do do that okay so this is this is a sm sm30 transaction maintain tables now if we have one more table let's create one more table for which we will also maintain the table maintenance generator for that so now we have the z customer and then we have something like customer details Table Intel and maintenance allowed failed. So we'll go with so these are the fields that we have. So we'll go ahead with the main data. And main data. Second, we will go for the customer number only, CUST and and ZJH underscore CUST and ZJH underscore CUST and we we'll create that. Then customer name, instead of that, we will go customer number, we will have address ZJH star. Let's go for address zjh underscore address. Character This time. Technical settings. So we'll always create three types of tables only. 
uh, in fact like two types of tables only master data or transaction data organizational data will never do and uh, these tables cannot be created by us these are all system generated tables which are related to bw business bureaus so these are all business bureaus tables that automatically gets created when in the back end when we create something in the front end so but only thing that we'll be doing is we'll be always creating ipl0 ipl1 that is master data and transaction data uh, i'll be explaining you the difference between master data and transaction data size category is something which we are which we are um, reserving some space for this table let's say you, you don't want to rely on the global memory you specifically want to you know uh, allot some memory to this then you will go for uh, this memory space so if you say that you know we have uh, if you if you mention the size category as 5 this much of memory space will be allocated for this particular table if you don't use it it will not be uh, you know if you don't use it it will be waste of for this that much memory will be wasted so we have to always make sure that unless and until it is very prioritized table if it's a very prioritized table where you have to store the data irrespective of whether the data is a, 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 a you know memory space is available or not you'll go for the you'll you'll reserve some memory let's say you are you are going to a restaurant simply to have lunch or dinner you'll just normally walk into the restaurant and see whether the seats are available but if you are taking a very prominent person with you and uh, it's very important to have a seat so then you reserve the seat and go so the reserving if you reserve a seat and you don't go it will be wasted that seat will be wasted nobody else will be able to occupy so in the same way if you are reserving some memory then that memory will be wasted if you, if you don't update it so that's the reason you will always go for size category zero okay so we created two fee, two tables now let's create a foreign key relation So the table name is ZJH underscore customer. Oh, spelling issue. So we have these fields. So we'll go ahead with this customer number. So we just have to so we can activate. So this is active now and uh, just select this and go for So we also need to maintain the table maintenance generator for this table also. So for the both we have to maintain and then we have to create a maintenance view. So the maintenance view is something which will update the data into both the tables. Uh, what will happen this for database table is database database view database view is combining data from multiple tables but in maintenance table 
maintenance you we combine update data into multiple tables so we are updating the data here yes. no parent So all that we have to do is once we have uh, maintained the foreign key relation, we just need to activate it. And once it's activated, uh, we'll be able to have this foreign key relation updated here. So once the foreign key relation is updated, we can go ahead and uh, maintain the table maintenance generator for the second screen, table maintenance generator. So we'll go for and and, and NC and and NC and is a global authorization group, which everyone will be able to update. So this is one step. I'll go to one step. I think uh, it's already taken. Na? So first screen is already taken in this FG1. So we'll not be able to create it with the same one. So we have to create the screen number as two. Create. So once this is done, we'll also be able to update the data into the second second table. So SM30. So we can go for C address, maintain, new entries. House, house number one, street number one. HYD India So in this way we can have it so we have updated the data now 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 that we have updated the data for both the one both the tables so we just need to remember the table names the first table is the spelling is different so this customer this is the spelling so we'll go ahead with the customer maintenance view okay create We'll go for maintenance view say okay and now maintenance view so we need to first give that second table name because updation will happen through the second table so z j h underscore so second table c address c address relationships go for c address no this one zjh and is for customer and the common field is customer number so, 
okay so when i place the cursor there and then, then this is getting updated here so once it's updated we have to we can go for view fields and uh, by default the view uh, mandatory view fields have been appearing here now in this like we'll go ahead with the customer address we have customer address also and then we have to go for second tape phone number and customer name we are updating that so all the field names are coming here activate Okay, once it's been done, we'll go back and uh, okay. For this also, we have to maintain the table maintenance generator. Go to utilities, table maintenance generator, and then we have to maintain the table maintenance for this maintenance view also. And NCN function group is ZJH and script G1, one step string number i am giving as three because one and two already are taken so it will not accept Okay, so this is done now. So we can go ahead and uh, uh, go for SM30 and maintain this set GH and score cast from there. So we'll get this set GH and score cast maintain. And this new entries. So we can go for something like 1002. Uh, this is the address, right? So house number 10 street 10 hyd india then we have customer name is navin customer uh, i to say sap something like So it is expecting something for which already we have the data already exists M02. just say enter data was saved so 102 for 102 there is no data in the second table so that's the reason it got saved so now we can go to the second table for 102 we can check the data will be updated there so this is what we have in the so this is up here okay this is about the maintenance view in maintenance view is basically the maintenance view is used to update the data into multiple tables from a single screen or in fact like uh, based on so if you have uh, one primary key in one table so if you have two or three uh, you know connected tables all these two or three connected tables we can update the data and we can get to it
okay the help view is for uh, you know multiple you know, the search help whatever we have if you want to maintain the search help for from multiple tables we'll go for help view okay type group we already discussed lock objects is one thing that we have discussed so we'll be discussing about that one as well so lock objects i'll be telling you one scenario which comes later so i'll be taking one scenario and um, explaining you but now we have to go for the events in a program so there are certain things called events in a program so these events are very important uh, to trigger so what is an event first okay that's what that is what i'll explain you now event is a is a syntax is a command with predefined code behind it predefined code so there will be if you write one let one word it has a lot of meaning in the back end so the first uh, event is initialization second act selection string third start of selection fourth end of selection top of page end of page so these are the events uh, for for a basic report program so for a basic report program these are the events that we have so these are the events so we need to understand about these events initialization at selection screen start of selection end of selection top of page enter so we're going to have this here so initialization is an event which is basically used to initialize values initialize values at selection screen is for validation of data so for validation of data we'll go for at selection screen and uh, we'll write this select statements all the select statements will be written in at selection screen end of and uh, start of selection end of selection we'll be writing uh, output uh, write statements so in fact in uh, what i mean to say is output statements top of page we'll be writing whatever headings for each page let's say if we have 40 pages output for each page we'll be getting this uh, in uh, top of page whatever we write end of page for every page end for every page at the end we'll have end of page. so these are the events that we are going to uh, we are going to understand by writing a program so we already wrote a pro simple program on KNM1, right? So we'll write a pro we already wrote a program on LF1. And I think we have to also use Mara. So let me use another table, some other table. Like I'll use KNBK. I'll use KNBK table. KNBK table is for customer bank details. Customer bank details. So for that KNBK is Okay, so we have to we have to write a program on this. So we'll go for AC that year, AC eleven. So let me show you first a KNBK table. That's the customer bank details table. So we have these all fields. These are the fields in KNBK, so we'll go ahead.
and I'm sure we also have the data in this. Yes, we do have the data. So, KMDK will will make use of uh, this program, this uh, you know, fields from KMDK, and let's write a program on this. Okay, first let me create a package in this because I have not created a package. I'm keep on loading in the local local package. Local package will be having name as dollar tmp. So we have this and uh, right click on this create program zjh underscore c bank So we'll first understand the significance of each and every event. If we write that event, what will happen is what we'll just discuss here. We'll see here. Okay, we'll go for tables. KNBK B A N K S B A N K L B A N K L. So let me see. Data item is for KNBK. Type standard table of question is for KNBK. W is for KNBK. Type question is for KNBK. Select options as and is for KNN. For KNBK item. KNN. And then we have select KNNR. Okay, before select statement, so if you have to get some default values here on the screen in the selection screen, if you want to get some default values on the selection screen, then we will be going for initialization. For example, if you execute this by default, some values have to come here, then you have to do it in the in the initialization. 
so we'll write initialization and in the initialization we'll go for uh, s underscore k gun and add hyphen low is equals to some hundred hyphen i is equals to some nine thousand hyphen sign including or excluding so i'll go for including three so including and excluding what exactly it means so simply if you have hundred and nine thousand so if you say including this hundred and nine thousand also will be included included if you write excluding then one at one to eight nine nine will be append distance to k and r now we have to append distance so once you have done this you will be able to see this default values in the next screen so on the selection screen let me show you the selection screen So when we see this, when we execute this, default values will be there. Default that values will come in the appear in this on the screen. This hundred and thousand nine thousand will by default be appearing on the screen. Selection screen. So here by default values will come here but if you maintain multiple values multiple selections you can go into this uh, extension and uh, we can check check them out so let us maintain multiple values here on the selection screen we'll maintain the multiple values in the in, uh, in the initialization so in initialization event whatever we maintain by default they are going to come here of course we can come here and change them but by default they will come here those values will come here.
so we'll go ahead with one more one more set of values so i'll write this as something like 10000 11000 uh, sign uh, excluding instead of b between i write not between so if we, if we execute this now you can see a green color uh, option here it means that it's an indication that some 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 more selections are inside this previously this green color was not there it was grayed out so if you select this you can see that there's a select range this there is an include include selection range and there is one exclude select selection range so including and in excluding Okay, fine. So in this way, let's let me let me comment this in initialization. If we comment this initialization, that will not work. There will not be any error. There will not be any error. But this logic what we have written will not work there. So if we execute, nothing will come here. Only when you have this initialization event written, system understands that you have to initialize some values. then we have at selection screen at selection screen is for some validations if at all if you have at selection screen so now i'll write select single knr from knbk into into something like uh, we will write some variable we'll write uh, some variable here NBK KNR in SMS for KNR. okay so what I tell you the system is select at least one field one one value at least see the, let's say we have selected some range in the select options for that range we are checking whether at least one record is there or not even if one record is not there it, then it should pop up a message saying that there are no records in this particular uh, syntax or in this particular range so if psi sub rc is not equal to zero means if the above one is not true we'll tell to the system that in the message uh, a001 zjh underscore msg we just need this message class how to create a message class and how to populate the messages and all these things i'll tell you that No data for selection. Save. Okay. Give us three. So now let's say I select this, I select it as 1 and uh, 2 and execute. So there's no data for selection. So this message should come. Uh, means if the data is there, then uh, it should proceed further. But if data is not there, it should throw an error. This, this is what is happening now. It's, it's throwing an error. Now let's say we have to go for, it will come out of this program.
now what we have here is let will go ahead with select statement see till now for select statement we have never used uh, any event called startup selection but if you observe this events pattern this initialization is starting but there is no end of initialization so suddenly at selection screen is starting so at selection screen is at start, is will when it will end when we go for end of selection yeah when we have startup selection so startup selection we'll go to select select this KUNR BANKS BANKL BANKS BANKL BANKL BANKS BANKL BANKL From KNBK into table I can score KNBK where KNR in SMS to KNR. So, since if you don't write this startup selection, this select statement becomes a part of the set selection screen. So, and uh, that that might not that might not be good. So in some cases it might uh, not give you the right kind of output because select statement will be considered as a part of that selection screen, right? So that will not be done. So we just need to activate this. Of course, we need to also write the loop statement for output. So for that we'll go. So this end of selection does not have much significance as of now. In major projects, end of selection will be of major use. Even if you don't write end of selection right now, it will still work fine. Even if you write without without end of selection, also if you write loop statement, it will still work fine. Okay, okay. Let's write w underscore k n b k let me k n r w underscore k n b k let me b n k s w underscore k n b k hyphen k n k l w underscore k n b k hyphen B N K N So these are the fields that we have. So we have initialization at selection screen, start of selection, end of selection. So if you don't have the data for a particular selection, immediately at selection only will pop up. So we do have the data, so we are not getting the message. So if you don't have any data for that particular selection, pop message will be populated. So these commands uh, are very important: start of selection, end of selection, at selection screen, and all these things. Now we'll go for the top of page. So we'll go for top of page, right? DXC, DXC, customer, bank details, so this is in the top of page. So if you see here, So this top of page will appear only once in the in the output. So here on the top it will appear. Afterwards it will not appear anywhere. It will not appear anywhere. But end of selection. End 
end of selection it comes to end of selection end of selection will not appear at all Okay, so this end of page will not be appearing in the output at all. In the output, you will not get the end of page at all. Why is it so? Why 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 the end of page will not come? End of page will not come because system does not know where the page ends. Okay, see this is the output fine, but we are not, we have to tell to the system where the page ends actually. So even if you tra drag down this entire screen to the bottom, even now okay, page number one is coming here. But last at the last it's coming only once it's coming. But you know if you have to if you mention to the system how many how many lines makes a page, then for every page the top of page and end of page will come. So for that what you need to do is you need to write here line count twenty eight of so what I'm what I'm telling to the system is you type 28 lines of data and then five lines you leave it leave it blank. Now the system will type 28 lines and then leaves five lines. So in this five lines we can type this end of page. End of page have to be typed here actually for every page end of page should come okay let me write this slash end of page slash it should come in every page no not end of selection sorry end of page end of page not end of, end of page so now we'll have this now after the every page ends this will be type. So page number one, page number two, page number three, page number four. So these are the values that we have. Okay. So I can I can increase the size of the page actually. So here we can go ahead with thirty-two.
number one. Page number two, so let's fill the cut. Page number three. So in this way, we'll have all the page numbers.